Well, hi guys, it's that time. It's our Bible teaching snippet of the day. Well, today I'm going to set in to part six of my extremely controversial series that I have named The Authority and Priority of the Words of Jesus. I would have never dreamed that I'm going to be sitting in my rocking chair having, quote, Christians who have been raised in churches want to tell me that the Old Testament scriptures sit on the same level as the words of Jesus. Guys, religion teaches us that sometimes, but that is simply and absolutely not what Jesus said. I am reading scripture to you that is written in red, okay? The Old Testament is accurate as it has been faithfully recorded, okay? But it is not always accurate in what people believed about God. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I'm not saying to throw away the Old Testament and not to trust what is written in it. What I am trying to teach is that we have to balance everything according to what Jesus himself said. If something in the Old Testament is opposite of what Jesus said, then we have to understand that the person in the Old Testament had a partial revelation but not full knowledge of who God is, okay? You know, let me uh, throw this out. The Bible is like a progressive revelation. What do I mean by that? Did you know that Adam in the Garden of Eden did not know that God was going to come down from heaven he was going to step down, put on flesh, become a human being so he could come here and show us who he really is and to redeem all of mankind. Adam did not know that. But as we go through the Bible, we see prophecies of the coming Messiah. Okay? So the Bible has its proper place, but everything that every person, every writer has ever written has to bow their knee to Jesus. Jesus is the only one who has ever said, I am truth. I'm praying that you will at least pray about this and, and realize that what I'm reading to you is written in red. These are the words of Jesus. And if we quit approaching the Bible as a flatline book where we read everything with the equal same amount of authority as what Jesus has, we won't be double-minded and think that God is angry, but then God's not angry anymore, but he makes people sick. But then Jesus says that he came to undo the works of the devil, which was making people sick. So you see how twisted we are. And I truly believe through what Holy Spirit has been dealing with me on to teach this is that the, the reason people have this mixed up view of God is because we have a religious doctrine that teaches us to just read the Bible as having the exact same authority and priority, and it simply is not true. Now, you have not heard me tell you to throw your Bibles in the garbage or to quit reading your Old Testament. What I am trying to show people is that you have to read the Old Testament in the light of it lining up with who Jesus says that the Father is. And if the Old Testament writers, what they say about God is opposite or does not line up with what Jesus says about God the Father, then you have to believe Jesus over those people who were only partially inspired and had partial understanding and knowledge, but not full revelation, knowledge, and understanding of the Father, okay? So let me read. I'm going to start here today. And I felt like I had to do that today because this series that I'm teaching is one of the most unpopular, controversial, and I would have never dreamed it. I thought that everybody simply understood that Jesus is Lord and everything that he says takes a top priority over everything that everybody else has ever said, including Moses and Job and Isaiah and anybody else. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is God made manifest. What are we doing thinking that mere humans measure up to who Jesus is? I'm going to have to walk away from that one. Let me read to you 
this scripture. And this is John chapter 14, and this is verse 8 through 11. And Philip spoke to Jesus and said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be all we need. And Jesus replies to Philip, Philip, I've been with you all this time, and you still don't know who I am? How could you ask me to show you the Father? For anyone who has looked at me has seen the Father. Don't you believe that the Father is living in me and that I am living in the Father? Even my words, the things that Jesus speaks, even my words are not my own but come from my Father. For he lives in me and performs his miracles of power through me. Believe that I live as one with my Father and that my Father lives as one in, with me. Or at least believe because of the mighty miracles I have done. Now, I want to put this in context today. Did you know that Philip and the disciples had no clue who God the Father is? Why else would Philip say, show us the Father? Explain to us who the Father is. They've been traveling with Jesus, living with him day in and day out, and they are so confused because Jesus is a completely different revelation. He is a completely different image of who they thought God of the Old Testament is. And they're confused, guys. They're like going, help us understand who God the Father is. You know, we know God the Father sent you, but you're not lining up with all of what we've been taught about God in the past. May I say this to you today? Many of us are in this same situation. We're praying and begging, show us who the Father is, show us who the Father is, and we keep going into the Old Testament thinking we're going to know the Father, and no one, no one in the days of Jesus even looked upon Jesus as being equal to or being God because they had a different perspective of who God the Father in the Old Testament was. Jesus comes on the scene and they don't even recognize him because he's totally different than what their opinions and thoughts were according to what they had read in their scrolls. Now, today, before I go any further, i tell you what I want to do. I want to read to you. Now, all right, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about as far as ever. Now, look. The Old Testament has its place, okay? Jesus just takes a higher ranking over those writings, guys, and we have to put them in the right order and the right priority. In the book of Job, Job says a lot of things about God that is not true. Yes, is it truly and accurately recorded? The words of Job are accurately recorded for us to learn from the words of his three friends, which are the theologians that came to explain to him why he's the reason all this mess is happening in his life, the things they said was not true, okay? They are accurately recorded, but their opinions and thoughts and what they said about God is not true. And I want to read you a scripture real quick so I can prove to you God himself says this. God is speaking. Are you going to listen to God or are you going to listen to Job and his three friends? Job said that God comes and he gives and he takes away and he makes people sick. And all of his three friends are talking all of this theologian stuff to him. But then Jesus comes and says the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. Not my father. Not me. I came to give life and to give it in abundance. Here, let me read you what God says to Job. He corrects Job, okay? Do you understand God is saying right here in the Bible that what Job believed and said about him is not true and some of the things that his three friends said about him was not true. So Job and his three friends may have said some things that may be right, but let's see what God says. And then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? He's speaking to Job, by the way. Now I'm going to read you the expanded in this. Who is this that makes my purpose unclear by saying things about me that are untrue? So what do we do with that? 
Well, we have to now reassess what, whether or not everything that everybody said or thought that was accurately and truly recorded and put in the Bible for us to learn from, we have to reassess the fact that Job was not right about the things he said about God, nor was his three friends, because over in the end of the book of Job, God tells Job to pray for his three friends because of them speaking things about him that wasn't true. I hope and pray that what I'm teaching you today is making a little bit of sense. I want to go a little bit longer today because I want to show you some more things that uh, to show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so what we have here is in Kings, uh, let's see, where is it? It's in 2 Kings chapter 1. Uh, and this is where Elijah wants to call down fire, and he did. Elijah said, if I am a man of God, I will call down fire and burn you. And 50 men burned up. Then he does it again, and 50 more burns up. And then 50 more come, and God stops him, and he doesn't burn the next 50. So now, we're, I'm going to go over to Luke chapter 9, verse 54 through 57. And this is in the Expanded Bible. When James and John, the followers of Jesus, saw that the Samaritans had rejected Jesus, they said, Lord, do you want us to call down fire from heaven and destroy these people? And then Jesus turned and scolded and rebuked them and said, you do not know what kind of spirit you belong to. The Son of Man did not come to destroy the souls and the lives of people, but to save them. I want you to see that, see, in the Old Testament, Elijah thought anybody that wasn't following God and wasn't accepting the God of Israel needed to be destroyed, and he calls down fire out of heaven. The Samaritans were the enemies of the Jews in Jerusalem. And so the boys, being Jews from Jerusalem, they see that uh, the Samaritans have rejected God of Israel, their Messiah, Jesus of Nazareth, and they want to do exactly what Elijah did. And Jesus says, no, you do not know what spirit you are working with. What he was saying is that what you're wanting to do to these people is not the true character and nature of my father. My father does not want this from people. He does not want, okay, I'm going to read you another scripture right here. It says in uh, Luke, uh, let's see, what chapter is this? I don't, uh, no, I'm sorry, it's Matthew chapter 5, verse 43. You have heard it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, pray for those who hurt and persecute you. Now, I want you to see this because I want to read you a little bit out of the Psalms chapter uh, 137, verse 8 and 9. And look at this. This is, this is written in your Bible. It says, O daughter of Babylon, who is to be destroyed, blessed is the one who rewards you as you have done to us. Blessed is the one who takes and dashes your little one's heads against the rocks and kills them. I want you to think about that. The writer of this Psalms is saying that a person who will kill their enemies is blessed. But Jesus said to love your enemies. Guys, there is no way that you can make the Old Testament views and opinions of who they believed God's true character and nature was line up with what Jesus represented to us. Jesus came to show us the Father Jesus came to show us truth, and we have to put the Bible in the right priority. I did not say to throw the Bible away or to throw away the Old Testament. I'm telling you that you have to look at Jesus first and line up everything that you believe about God the Father based solely on Jesus. And that, my friends, is biblical and you would be a much, much, much more trusting toward our Father if you did that. I love you, and I will see you here again tomorrow. Bye-bye.